Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Mr. Wiz here, happy to have you back. So today's video is not a full lesson. It is just a closer look at multiplayer games. So recently I made this Pong game here, which does not seem to be loading right now. Let's see if I can refresh the page. Hmm, there we go. So recently I made this Pong game and in the process of doing so, we did talk briefly about multiplayer because we had to create player two controls and we also created points for player one and for player two. We talked about how to do that. And in the process of making that video, I did explain to you guys that you can make multiplayer games for up to four people. So that's what this video is about. How do you build four player multiplayer games? How do you play four player multiplayer games? How do you test those games while you're building them? This is all important stuff for you to know. So we're going to go over that in this video. So first things first, before we get too deep into it, I want to show you some multiplayer games that my students made just this last year that are pretty good examples of a four player game because I challenged them to make some good four player games. So let's see when some of the ones they made this last year. So this game is a 2v2 soccer game that was made by two of my students. And to play it, you would use the arrow keys. So there's no button presses. You're just knocking the ball into the player's goal. So player one, of course, would use WASD or arrow keys. And because this is online multiplayer, all four players will be playing with arrow keys or WASD from their own computers. In a two player game, we learned that you would play or you could play on the same computer where one player uses WASD and the other player uses IJKL. And in fact, in MakeCode, if you click on the keyboard underneath the simulator, you can see those button presses. So if you forget what they are, they're right there. You can see them when you click on the keyboard, but they only show player one and player two. They don't show player three and player four because if you're playing a game with three or four players, the only way to play it is online by hosting an online multiplayer game. So how does that work? So let's say I've got this marble soccer game here and I want to play it with up to four people. The way I would do that is I would have to click on this button up here that says host game. So up there at the top, you have show code. We can see people's code and edit code. Host game is what you would use to invite people to join your multiplayer game. So if I click on host game, it takes me to this new page where I'm given a link and a QR code and I'm given a six digit code here. So this is the code that they would use to join my game. And they could do that by scanning the QR code and playing on their phones or by using this link and playing from another computer. Now I will be honest with you guys, this link does not always work. In my experience, sometimes the link doesn't load correctly. So if you're having trouble with the link, there is another way to get to it. On the main page of MakeCode, which I can get to by clicking up here, MakeCode Arcade. On the main page of MakeCode, you have this banner at the top, which scrolls through new news and new things that are going on. Well, the very first one right now, this might change later, but right now the very first bubble there is the multiplayer game. So if I click try now, it will take me to a page where I can then type in that six digit code. So if you're hosting a game of multiplayer game, all you need is one person to host it and three people to enter that code on their devices. So if I was to enter the code, which was CF2517, then I could then join the game. Now, of course, I, it wouldn't make sense for me to do that because I'd be playing with myself. But if I had friends with me, they could type in those numbers now and they could join my game and we could play together as a 2v2 soccer team. So you'll also see here underneath where the code is, there are some other games. So these are games made by MakeCode. You can also play with up to four people. All right, so the process of hosting a game and joining a game is not that complicated. Let's take a look at the process of building these games. So just real quick, I told you I was gonna show you these three games, so let me go ahead and do that. By the way, I will put links to these games in the description of this video, so you can play them yourself if you can find people to play with you. You just need to host it and give them the code and let them play with you. So here, this is a 2v2 where player one and player three are playing against players two and four, and you're just trying to knock the soccer ball into the goal to get the points. The next game, oh, that's not a game. 
that's the multiplayer screen. Here we go. The next game I want to show you is a 2v2 basketball game. This one's a lot of fun, where once again, you have two players against the other two players. So in this game, you use arrow keys, but you also have to use the A, B buttons, which you can use with spacebar and enter or X and Z. So the A button picks up the ball and allows you to walk around the, the, the map with it. And then if you press the B button, it throws the ball. So the goal, of course, is to throw the ball into the hoop. And the great thing about this game, this is a really fun game to play with friends, is everybody has the ability to pick up the ball and steal it from the other player. So if one person has the ball, you can run up and you can press A and you can grab it out of their hands and throw it. So right there, you saw me do it because I was using the IJKL buttons to pick it up and throw it there. So really fun game. Um, once again, online multiplayer up to four people, 2v2. Then this game back here, this game is called Titan Boss. In this game, all four of you are working together to defeat a super boss. So in this game, you are trying to avoid getting hit by those little white projectiles. And then you have to spam the A button to shoot at the boss. And the goal, of course, is to defeat him before he defeats all four players. This is, this is actually a really hard game, but a lot of fun to play. So yeah, let's take a look at the code now and how they created these games. If I click show code, I can see what makes them up. So for this game, the Titan boss, where it's four players versus the Titan, the way they coded it is they created their four sprites, which they named player one, player two, player three, player four, and they set them all up as player kind. Then of course they created the enemy and they created the stuff for the, here's the player controls here. Player one, two, and four. Where's player three? Oh, it's down there. <laughs> so they've got the four player controls in there. They've got lives for all four players. So they all start with three lives. They have here when their lives equal zero, that that player will get destroyed. So when that player runs out of lives, they will get destroyed. And then I wanted to show you how they lose lives. So this is the part of the code that I thought was really cleverly done here. It says it's an overlap code. You guys have seen those before. So on sprite of kind player overlaps with other sprite of kind projectile. So the sprite that's projectile kind is those white projectiles that we're shooting from the boss. So basically what this says is when a sprite that is a player overlaps with one of those projectiles, there's logic here. If that sprite, so they used the temporary variable sprite, they dragged and dropped it here. So if that sprite is player one, then player one loses a health. If that sprite is player two, then player two loses a health. If that sprite is player three, Player three loses a health and the same thing for player four. So that's how they were able to keep their code nice and organized so that whenever one of those white projectiles hits any of the players, the computer checks to see, well, which player did it hit? If it hit player one, then player one is going to be the person who loses the point and so on and, and so forth, right? Loses the life, I should say. So very well thought out, well designed overlap code here. The other thing I wanted to show you in their code was a bug fix, but this is a pretty common bug that you might run into in these style games. So I wanted to show you how they fixed it. What they learned is that with their block that destroyed the player, sometimes a player would get destroyed, they run out of lives, their sprite would be destroyed, but their button presses were still working. So even though a player was dead, they were still allowed to keep shooting at the boss, which is a bug, that shouldn't happen. So what they did here is on player one button press, two, three, and four, you've got them all here. They put a logic block so that their projectile would only work if their life was greater than zero. I thought that was really clever. So this makes it so that when the player gets destroyed, they also can't shoot, right? They can only shoot when they have more than zero lives. So this is a great bug fix to prevent the infinite ability to shoot even after dead bug. So some fun stuff here. So let's look at one of the other games. 2v2, if I look at their code, this was the basketball game. They did theirs a little bit differently. So when they created their four players, they named them player one, player two, player three, player four. But instead of keeping them all as player kind, they decided to create a new kind for each one. So they have a P1, P2, P3, P4 for their kinds. And that's perfectly fine. There's more than one way you can kind of build these things out, right? Now the negative of doing this, it just means you're gonna to have to have more overlap codes because they need to make an overlap code for player one, an overlap code for player two, an overlap code for player three, 
and an overlap code for player four, but it still works, right? It still absolutely works. Oh, here's some craziness. Wow. So they also have a lot of image changes. So when any of the players press up, down, left, or right, their picture will actually change. And that creates some simple kind of animation type movements, which I thought was pretty clever. So some good stuff going on here. Um, here they have where you're getting the points when the ball gets in one of the goals. So they have different kinds for the two goals. And then if it gets in one goal, player two gets a point. And when it gets another goal, player one gets a point. So here's an interesting thing I want to mention. They only have two scores in this game. They have one for player one score and one for player two score. It's a four player game, but they only have scores for player one and player two. Why do you think that is? Think about the type of game we're building here. This is a 2v2 basketball game. Even though it says player one score and player two score, it's really a team score. So it's really more like team one and team two. But in the game, it doesn't look that way. Because when you go to play the game, the scores just appear on the top left. So there's the player one score and there's the player two score, which is really team one and team two. So it's just kind of a clever way of reworking it. So I thought that was pretty interesting to take a look at. Let's take a look now at the marble game, the soccer game. So in this game, if we look at their code, it's going to be probably similar to the basketball one because it's also team-based. So here they did keep all four players as player kind. Um, they got the movement controls in here. They have a countdown of two minutes or 120 seconds, which is pretty cool. And then here's the cool thing about this game is that when the countdown ends... When the countdown ends, they use logic to decide how the game is going to end. So if player one score is equal to player two score, now keep in mind, these are team scores, right? So it's really more like team one, team two, but it's coded as player. So if the two team scores are equal, then they restart the countdown with another 30 seconds. Basically, they created in this game overtime. So if at the end of the, the 120 seconds, the team scores are equal, it adds 30 seconds to the clock and they keep going. Otherwise, so this is where the else has come in. So this is a, this is a big if, else. Yeah, this is a big if else if situation. So if the scores are not equal, so that's the else or else. If player one score is greater than player two, Columbia wins is the message that they get at the end of the game. And then it's game over win. If player two score is greater, then it says Mexico wins. So they created two different endings depending on which team wins, which I thought was very, very clever. Um, so all three of these games are fun to play, and they're all coded very well. Here you can see where the team scores happen when the ball gets in one of the goals. So they do have different kinds for the goals. I think one's called goal, and this one's supposed to say goal also. I think it's a typo, but that's okay. It works. All right, cool stuff. So those are some examples of some very well-made four-player games. One last thing I wanted to mention before I let you guys go. If you are building a four player game like this, it is important to make sure you are able to test it. Now, if you're playing the game, you can only play by hosting and letting other people join you. But when you're building the game, testing is a little different. You wanna be able to test it as all four players to make sure your game works. So here's how that works. On the left-hand side of the screen where you have your simulator, below the simulator, there are four icons here. I have a red person, a blue person, an orange person, and a green person. These represent players one, player two, player three, and player four. So as the programmer, if you want to make sure, oh, I'm just gonna mute that, there we go. So as the programmer, if I want to make sure that all four players are working correctly, that they can all kick the ball and things like that, I need to test it as all four players. So the way I do that, normally I'm playing as player one. I can walk over to it and I can kick the soccer ball and I can say, yeah, it looks like it's working. So if I want to test it as player two, I could use IJKL on my keyboard, or I can click on this blue guy. If I click on the blue guy, I'm not using IJKL. I'm still going to use my arrow keys or my WASD key. I'm still playing with the player one controls on my computer, but I'm controlling player two. So I'm playing as if I'm playing in the online, right? As if I'm playing a game that someone else is hosting. And to play as player three, I just click on the orange person, and now I can use my arrow keys and play as player three. And to play as player four, I just click on the green one, and now I'm player four. So this allows me to test the games as all four players separately. 
individually. I can play as any of them to make sure that the stuff is working correctly. That's a really important part of game testing because you want to make sure if you're building a multiplayer game that it's balanced, that everyone's controls work the same way, that everybody's game is fair and equal. So you really need to play as all four characters. So to do that, you just select the character that you want to play as while you are testing it. So just some important stuff for you to know. I would love to see if you guys make any multiplayer games, especially any online multiplayer games. If you do, please share them in the comments of this video. If you liked this video, if you learned something new, please go ahead and click that like button. If you're not already subscribed, please do so. There's a lot more that we're going to be covering here in the next few weeks, and you're not going to want to miss it. Um, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again later.